Hello, my name is Lucas, this is Bitablit, and I wanted to talk about a canticle for Leibowitz. Pound pastrami, can kraut, six bagels, take home, bring home for Emma. So close, so close! Um, this book is fantastic. I have not read something like it uh, before. Uh, I mean, I've read books, um, fix-up novels, uh, novels that have different short stories that are all connected by one central event. Um, and I've read post-apocalyptic novels, but like I guess the focus of it, and with everything combined with the theme uh, and the execution of uh, the prose and this kind of thing, and how it gets about its message. Um, it, it, yeah, I'm not saying that there's nothing like it. It's just out of my reading experience. Completely a wild book. Very much feel like you're right there in the monastery where Lebo Lebowitz went after the first um, nuclear war, the Flame Deluge. And uh, he went there because he thought his wife was dead. Um, if not from the nuclear war, then from the simplification where the simpletons were trying to destroy all knowledge because knowledge brought them to the point of collapse, of the collapse of civilization as they knew it, and people were rightfully upset about that. <laughs> um, anyway, it got to a point where they were just killing anybody that was literate. Uh, so he hides out in the monastery, joins the Brotherhood, and becomes a bootlegger for books, a booklegger, and um, he, yeah, he, he uh, starts preserving knowledge uh, for future generations. And this book is definitely, there's three stories, Fiat Homo, Fiat Lux, and I forgot the third one, Fiat Voluntas Tua. Um, there's a lot of Latin in here, so I don't know all the words, and I, I'm not very good with uh, declension, d declining, uh, and that kind of thing. But um, anyway, so there's a lot of it I just kind of missed out on, but that's okay. <laughs> This book is focused on the cyclical nature of man. The first story very much focused on uh, the church preserving knowledge, right? Uh, which happened in Western civilization. And the second one is sort of a story of uh, renaissance. And the third one is right back into a cold war that gets really, really hot. Um, and I gotta say, the story I didn't like too much, I, I still was really engaged with it, uh, and it, it was just a trip to think about. Um, was the second one, I do love the, um, uh, the character that sort of pits other, other nations against each other so that he can basically be the de facto man in power uh, because other, you know, groups are neutralized, basically. Um, and then he gets excommunicated, uh, <laughs> which, by the Pope in New Rome, which is like in, I don't know, Kansas or something, probably. Uh, I was looking at a map <laughs> because I wasn't really sure where it was. I knew it wasn't in California. This whole thing takes place in America. Uh, and all three stories, by the way, they take place, the first one, Fiat Homo, takes place 600 years after the events where, in which Leibowitz lived through. And then Fiat Lux takes 600 years after that, and then 600 years after that for the last one. And, um, yeah, so that was the second story. Uh, there, it, it is a trip. The whole book is a trip. Um, what I really like are the first and third ones, um, because the first one, 
I like that uh, there's this really funny part where they're talking about uh, this document that mentions electrons and they have no idea what it is or what what it was used for or or yeah they have no idea and they're just hoping well maybe one day we'll see it <laughs> um, it's uh why am i holding the book to my head i don't know but this book is so hilarious at times it just i, I love that conversation uh i did not mark what page it was because this is not mine um, so I don't want to damage the book in any way. It's from work, but, uh, yeah. Okay, so, the first story. It's sort of like with the church canonizing knowledge and what's important and what's not important. And, uh, this, the main character of the first story, he finds, he has this very odd experience that, he tells some of the other brothers about the other monks, and they blow it out of proportion, and the abbot is just livid because um, he's afraid with everything that has happened with the main character um, and the things that he found. And what's being said, that the Pope from New Rome is going to uh, delay making Leibowitz a saint. <laughs> and... And um, what is really something that made me like, think about the, about the book and about the real world, you know, um, they know that a lot of the stuff that Leibowitz left behind uh, is not actually knowledge or useful in any way. For example, this message but it's kind of what they got, and they want him to be a saint, and, um, it, uh, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, <laughs> um, it made me start to think, like, you know, because the church is deciding what's important, and they're, you know, they've got these, something like this, and, <laughs> and they don't know what to make of the electron thing, and just, It made me think, like, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder, in my own personal experience as an American, what has been uh, left behind for me to think of as important that I will look back to for its apparent knowledge? Uh, and how useful is that to me? Um, or what kind of customs, even? Not so much something silly like this. Uh, so there's that. Um, and then the third one, I'd like to quote it uh, just to bring back the cyclical nature of man thing. The abbot snapped off the set. This is right after uh, an attack went off with a nuclear weapon when things got hot. Actually, I'm gonna quote two parts. Uh, the abbot snapped off the set. Where's the truth, he asked quietly. What's to be believed, or does it matter at all when mass murder's been answered with mass murder? Rape with rape, hate with hate. There's no longer much meaning in asking whose ax is the bloodier. Evil on evil, piled on evil. Was there any justification in our police action in space? How can we know Certainly there was no justification for what they did, or was there? We only know what that thing says, and that thing is a captive, the, their source of information. Uh, the Asian radio has to say what will least displease its government. Ours has to say what will least displease our fine, patriotic, opinionated rabble. Which is what, coincidentally, the government wants it to say anyhow, so where's the difference? <laughs> Dear God, there must be half a million dead if they hit Texarkana with the real thing. I feel like saying words I've never he even heard. Toad's dung, hag pus, gangrene of the soul, immortal brain rot. Do you understand me, brother? 
and Christ breathed the same carrion air with us. How meek the majesty of our almighty God. What an infinite sense of humor for him to become one of us. <laughs> King of the universe, nailed on a cross as a Yiddish schlemiel by the likes of us. They say Lucifer was cast down for refusing to in adore the incarnate world, word. The foul one must totally lack a sense of humor. God of Jacob, God even of Cain, why did they do it all again? Uh, so, you know, there's that. There's this death wish of humanity, I guess. Uh, and all of this focus on religion and what knowledge gets passed down. And at the end, there's a little ecological moment. And you know, even in the beginning, because this, I mean, the Southwest is a desert, but um, it really feels so barren. I mean, even more so than it actually feels, I guess, um, in real life. Uh, a wind came across the ocean, sweeping with it a pall of fine white ash. This is after everything, everything. The ash fell into the sea and into the breakers. The breakers washed dead shrimp ashore with the driftwood. Then they washed up the whiting. The shark swam out to his deepest waters and brooded in the cold, clean currents. He was very hungry that season. And, uh, yeah, everything is dead again. <laughs> um, that was a real downer. But, uh, yeah, man, I mean, there's just so many... I, I couldn't believe how, like, real the monastery felt, the characters felt, the, the sorrows that they felt, the, the sort of political butting of heads in the second one, even in the first one where it was more interpersonal, um, and, of course, the third story. Uh, yeah, excellent story, uh, excellent novel. Well worth winning a Hugo Award and... I think it's worth reading, so thank you. Goodbye.